All right. Uh, good morning. Um, here at headquarters, as you heard on Friday, the Economic and Social Council Youth Forum is gotten underway and under the theme, the role of youth in building sustainable and resilient rural and urban communities. During the opening ceremony, the Deputy uh, Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, and the youth, youth envoy, Jayathma Wikran Manyake, praised the level of engagement that youth today are having with the Sustainable Development Goals and encouraged them to take ownership of Agenda 2030 in their own countries to ensure its success. They also discussed ways to bring young people closer to the UN, as well as the UN closer to where young people are. As you may be aware, the SDG Media Zone for the Forum is also taking place today and tomorrow in the Unca Club. Many youth advocates and, advo and activists are participating there, and you can join them at the club or watch it live on UN Web TV. <clears throat> we will also like to inform you that the Youth Envoy will travel to Senegal, the Gambia, Nigeria, and South Africa later this week. She will be, it'll be her first a visit to Africa as envoy, and she will meet with young people and learn about opportunities and challenges they are facing in their countries. Turning to Syria, Ursula Mueller, the Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator, briefed the Security Council today on Syria, where she said the United Nations estimates 13.1 million people are in need of protection and humanitarian assistance, including 6.1 million people who are displaced within the country. Another five and a half million people have fled the conflicts across the borders into neighboring countries, she added. Uh, Ms. Mueller expressed particular concern for the safety and protection of civilians caught up in the violence in the northwest of the country, where hostilities have reportedly claimed numerous deaths and injuries. Airstrikes and fighting in southern Idlib and northern Hama have resulted in over 270,000 displacements since the 15th of December, driving people from their home in other areas of Idlib. Further north, she said in Afrin, the UN is carefully monitoring the situation of over 300,000 people living in the district that is witnessing the fighting. We have reports of civilian casualties that some 15 and, and that some 15,000 people have been displaced within Afrin district and another thousand have been displaced to Aleppo governorate. We've also received reports that local authorities inside Afrin are restricting civilian movements, particularly for those who want to leave the area. And she also warned of reports uh, about reports of, of possible attacks on hospitals and health facilities. And just to remind you, the special envoy, Stefan Di Mistura, is in Sochi today, and we're uh, trying to get more details on the goings on there, which are reportedly still going on. And an update on uh, aid to Yemen. There are now six vessels currently offloading in Hodeida, three of them carrying a combined 61,700 metric tons of food and three carrying a combined 33,265 metric tons of fuel. The, there are seven other vessels at the Anchorage area carrying a combined 53,000 metric tons of fuel, and those are waiting to dock and be unloaded. In January, over 290,000 metric tons of food and over 165,000 metric tons of fuel were imported via Hodeida and Salif ports, representing 82 to 30 percent of the respective national imports requirements. As a result of this crisis, food prices are 30 percent higher than pre-crisis. The price of food have increased between 26 and 85 percent after the start of the blockade in November and December. Inflation has weakened the Yemeni currency by about 50 percent. Turning to Libya, our colleagues at the UN Children's Fund said today the humanitarian situation in Libya continues to deteriorate with some 378,000 children in need of life-saving assistance and protection in this year. UNICEF is therefore appealing for some $20 million to scale up its response to provide immediate assistance as well as long-term support to children throughout the country. Among the 170,000 people displaced are an estimated 54 percent are children. Libya is also home to hundreds of thousands of migrants and refugees, a significant proportion of whom are children. At risk of abuse, violence, human rights violations, and vulnerable to recruitment by armed groups and lacking the most basic services, children in Libya are also in urgent needs of protection and care. And in South Sudan, the UN Migration Agency is appealing for $103.7 million for this coming year to provide life-saving humanitarian assistance as well as to support transition, recovery, and migration 
management initiatives. Around 7 million people in South Sudan need relief aid. IOM says that as a condition worsens every day that the crisis persists, sustained levels of life-saving assistance are crucial. And UNRWA, the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, has launched an appeal for its emergency programs of over $800 million. Of that amount, approximately $400 million each is intended for Syria and the occupied Palestinian territory. The appeal also covers some 50,000 Palestine refugees from Syria who have fled to Lebanon and Jordan. At a launch event in Geneva, the UNRWA Commissioner General, Pierre Krahenbuehl, explained that the majority of Palestinian refugees in the occupied Palestinian territory and from Syria <clears throat> and in Syria, sorry, rely on the agency to provide aid, which is literally life-saving, including food, water, shelter, and medical assistance. And from Somalia, the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mark Lokok, as well as the head of UN Development Program, Achim Steiner, today uh, are in Syria, or excuse me, are in Somalia, and today they brought to the brought attention to the recently launched humanitarian response plan and the resilience and recovery framework which seeks 1.5 billion dollars to keep last year's efforts to avert famine and build resilience in the country mr lokok praised the collaborative efforts by the government civil society local and local people and the international community that helped avert a catastrophe in 2017 but he stressed that some 5.4 million people are still in need of life-saving humanitarian assistance. And UNICEF today appealed for $3.6 billion to provide life-saving humanitarian assistance in 2018 to 48 million children living through conflict, natural disasters, and other emergencies in 51 countries. Conflicts that have endured for years, such as the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Iraq, Nigeria, South Sudan, Syria, and Yemen, among other countries, continue to deepen in complexity, bringing new waves of violence and displacement and disruption to children's lives. UNICEF says parties to the conflict are showing a blatant disregard for the lives of children. Children are not only coming under direct attack, but they're also being denied basic services as schools, hospitals, and civilian infrastructure are either damaged or destroyed. More than $3 billion of that uh, funding appeal is for work in countries affected by humanitarian crises, born of violence and conflict. <clears throat> its largest component this year is for children and families caught up in the Syrian conflict, soon to enter its eighth year. UNICEF is seeking almost $1.3 billion to support 6.9 million Syrian children inside Sochi and or, excuse me, inside Syria, excuse me, and those living as refugees in neighboring countries. A uh, couple of trip announcements. One is to inform you that uh, next month the Secretary General plans to, and that's February, uh, which is soon, uh, the Secretary General will be traveling to Geneva to attend the opening session of the 37th session of the Human Rights Council. That will be on 26 February. And to remind you, as he already announced in his press conference, that he will be traveling to the Republic of Korea for an official visit next week. Uh, he will be in Korea from the 7th to the 10th of February. As part of the visit, he will meet uh, with President uh, Moon Jae-in, as well as Foreign Minister Kyung-Hwa uh, Kyung Kang, and he will also attend the uh, opening ceremonies of the Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, and in Seoul he will speak at the Global Engagement and Empowerment Forum on Sustainable Development. <clears throat> Uh, to remind you, at 1 p.m., there will be a press conference here organized by the UN Office for Partnerships on the 2018 Investors Summit in Climate Risk, capturing the investment opportunities of the Paris Agreement. And tomorrow at 11 a.m., I believe, there will be uh, the annual commemoration in memory of the victims of the Holocaust that will take place in the General Assembly Hall, and the Secretary General will deliver remarks. And finally, uh, we say thank you to Bahrain, India, Rwanda, and Samoa, uh, bringing the honor roll to? 29. Excellent. Um, and just as a point of comparison, uh, this is an increase over the last few years. By the end of January 2015, 16, and 17, only 25 states had paid their duty dues in full. So we are up. Uh, no, he won. You claim your prize, Matthew. OK, and here it is. Um, Sure, it's a price for me. Yes, yes go ahead. I, 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 I want to ask, uh, yesterday I'd asked Ferhan about the meeting between the Secretary General and Omar al-Bashir. Um, and he confirmed that it took place. Somehow it wasn't disclosed in, in his opening, which is fi all fine. I've asked the ICC, and they've come back with what are the rules uh, or, or the guidelines for contacts. 
And one, I want to ask you about two things. One thing it says is that the Secretary, in advance of such a meeting, is supposed to inform the Office of Legal Affairs, which in turn informs the prosecution, the prosecutor of the ICC's office. I wanted to know if that took place here, and also I'm asking you, pursuant to the guidelines, mm -hmm. Who attended the meeting? I, I'd like to know if you attended, but I'd also like to know on the Sudan side. And the reason I'm asking is because the guidance on this important issue says whenever, if contact is deemed absolutely necessary, and I'd like you to address that, quote, every attempt shall be made to interact with individuals of the same group or party who are not subject to an ICC arrest warrant. So can you, these are three things. Did, who attended the meeting? Was OLA and the prosecutor told? And separately, did you go? Uh, no, I did not attend. Uh, I don't have, I'm not aware of who the insiders were on the Sudanese uh, side. I think Fahan provided a very clear explanation uh, yesterday as to uh, our operational needs. This was also a meeting in the framework of the Secretary General's uh, work on South Sudan. Uh, he wanted to meet with the heads of delegation at the African Union of every country bordering uh, South Sudan, and that was the meeting took place in that context. Right. The guidelines say it's very much about the country concerned. It's not a, it, I mean, you, I'm sure you've read them, but the, the main thing is it seems like you didn't answer there. Did Antonio Guterres inform OLA in advance of the meeting as required by the guidelines, and did OLA, if he did so, inform the prosecutor? Uh, I have no doubt that procedures were followed. Can you find out? Uh, I mean, it seems go important. Ahead. Go ahead. Uh, follow up, please. Uh, with regard to this meeting between the Secretary General and uh, <coughs> President al Bashir of uh, Sudan, did the Secretary General bring at any point uh, uh, the issue of his indictment with the ICC? Did he advise him to turn himself in or anything on this sort? And the second part, uh, with regard to the Secretary General. Uh, reform plan uh, for the UN and the input from the donor and member states. Uh, did he just bring the issue of the reduction in peacekeeping uh, budgets? And since a lot of the African countries depend on uh, revenues generated from contributing forces to the UN peacekeeping the, the, missions. To take your questions backwards, the issue of, of peacekeeping was very much uh, front and center. In his, uh, in his discussions, uh, both publicly and, and privately with, with leaders. And I, I would refer you back to his, uh, uh, to his press conference in his, uh, in, uh, that he did in Addis and how he addressed uh, those points. One is the issue of mandates, especially, uh, and also looking more strategically at those missions uh, where there is little or no political uh, process, also looking at the issues of training, uh, the working partnership with TCCs, uh, how troops are trained, how troops are deployed, uh, how troops engage. So this was, as I said, very clear uh, on, his, uh, on, on his mind. I really have nothing further to say on the meeting with, uh, uh, with President uh, Bashir. I told we we gave you the, the legal framework. I told you in which the political context in which this, uh, uh, this occurs. And this does not lessen the, the Secretary General's support uh, for the international criminal system. Right, yes. Uh, th Thanks, thank Stefan. You. So let's go back and then we'll go back to you. Okay. Um, how does the UN assess the situation in Aden? Is it a coup, attempt coup? Is it uh, just escalation? Do you have any concerns about the situation that it's getting really bad according to the reports that no, are we've, we're that. extremely uh, concerned by the violence that we've seen over the last uh, couple of days uh, especially the armed clashes between the, the so-called Southern Transitional Council and government forces um, we've seen reports of a uh, large number of dead of, of injured uh, this only adds to the already to, to to the current suffering uh, of the people of Yemen, the people of, the re of, of that, uh, that, that region in Yemen. Uh, we call on all parties to abide by their obligations under international humanitarian law. It's paramount that civilians are protected and that the wounded are afforded safe access to medical care and that all sides facilitate life-saving humanitarian access. Staying in Aden, now with the central bank is supposed to be in Aden, or maybe it's part of it in Aden, another is in Georgian. Um, how, is, uh, how are salaries being paid? And uh, do, does the United Nations still consider Hadi as the legitimate president of Yemen with all this uh, secessionism in yes, the there, country? There is a, there is a gov legitimate government uh, that is uh, 
represented uh, represented here. Uh, the UN's not in the business of recognizing governments, but there's a legitimate authority that we deal with. Um, as for salaries, I'd have to check. I know that has been a concern in in the past. I'll have to get a I'll have to get an update on that for you. Well, uh, uh, another question regarding uh, the oh, <clears throat> Turkish operations in northern Syria. Yesterday, we asked about napalm being used against Afrin. <clears throat> And today there are reports of uh, cluster bombs littering many towns and villages there. Uh, how does the United Nations we, we, view this? We've seen, you know, some of the press reports that that you have. We have no independent confirmation of that actually happening. It doesn't mean it's not happening. We, as we've said, we have no one on the ground where the fighting is is happening. Obviously, if those reports turned out to be true, it would, these would be gross violations of um, of human rights and of international law. How, how um, about I'll, the follow-up? I will, I will, no, I will, I will, will come back to you, Elman. I will come back to you, Elman. On Mali, could you please confirm if uh, MINUSMA has asked once again for the reinforcement of its mandate? Uh, no, I have to. Uh, let me get back to you on uh, on the mandate discussion on MINUSMA. Majid. Stefan, thank yes, you very sir. much. With regard to the Assistant Secretary General's statement today, she mentioned Afrin and oh, its... Hold on. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to repeat my question. With regard to Assistant Secretary General's statement today, she mentioned Afrin and its 300,000 civilians, but she did not mention two things that I'm hoping you can tell me why. The first one is no mention of the number of civilians, although there are reports that there are dozens of them, number of civilians that got killed due to this operation. And the second thing she didn't mention is, is the word Turkey in his statement. Turkey who started this operation, uh, while she mentioned the local authorities about restricting the civilians, but no mention of Turkey I think, there. First of all, this was a humanitarian, uh, a humanitarian briefing, uh, and she focused on the impact on civilians, and that's that's her, that's the focus of the briefing. Um, so that's one. Second, if there were numbers that were not mentioned, I'm sure it's because they were not able to have enough uh, clarity in the reports that are being received. As I said, we don't have anybody particular specific on the ground, so we're what we do is try to rely on, on reports from other sources that we feel confident in. It is clear that people are being killed. It is clear that people have been killed. There's fighting going on. There's shelling going on. Uh, we've asked, uh, we've expressed our concern and asked for these, uh, uh, for this violence uh, to stop. Whenever we're able to report on numbers in a way that we feel confident, uh, we do so. And uh, just follow up, do you have people on the ground in Eastern Ghouta? Uh I will check what our presence is in Ghouta from either us or our partners. Mr. Lee, and then we'll go to Nizar. Sure. I wanted to ask you yesterday. Your, your mic, don't forget. Um, uh, Fairhan, both here and then in writing afterwards, the, about uh, the four, now I guess it's 47 Cameroonians that were extradited or, or, or refooled back from Nigeria to Cameroon. Uh, and he t initially indicated that the Deputy Secretary General had done some things on this. I tried to ask her this morning, she didn't say it. but. The, the minister has said it. It seems pretty clear that they were sent back. UNHCR had said that they had received assurances from Nigeria that they would not be sent back against their will. What is the UN's understanding of how this took place and what's their comment on it? And what specifically did the Secretary General do while she was in Abuja? Uh, the issue was raised during the Sec Deputy Secretary General's visit. Um, we've seen the reports of the the return are the understanding from UNHCR and I'm relying on on UNHCR's uh, reports and there I know they they will be issuing a full report uh, press release uh, soon uh, that there was uh, an issue of people being refooled as they had uh, been uh, they had requested asylum as a matter of principle it is paramount that uh, the rights of asylum seekers be respected and that uh, the rights of non refoulement be also respected. Given that, that the, the, the political envoy, Francois Fall, had talked about a dialogue, and given that one of the people, uh, presumably, that would have been part of the dialogue has now been accused of being a terrorist and has been sent back to, quote, face justice in Yaoundé, uh, has Mr. Fall done anything? Is there any... Uh, I think the conversations, the conversations the between Mr. Fall and the, the Cameroonian uh, 
uh, authorities are continuing and our offer to assist uh, remains. How can you assist if somebody is going to be charged with Well, I'm saying our offer to our offer remains. Uh, Nizar, I promise to return yeah, to you. Uh, staying on Syria, in, in previous occasions you relied heavily on eyewitnesses. Some of them were uh, in other countries to find out the facts about what's happening on the ground. Uh, hundreds of thousands are leaving, uh, fleeing the areas of conflict in northern Syria. Has the United Nations been able to contact any of these victims or any of those injured to, to tell the story what's happening there? I think we, uh, our humanitarian colleagues uh, do their best uh, through various sources, whether it's primary eyewitness sources or various NGOs, to gather as much information as possible. Right, and then Evelyn, sorry. Follow up on my uh, previous question. Um, I just received the breaking news that one of the main uh, neighborhoods in Aden just collapsed in, in the, uh, uh, from the legit uh, uh, government. I mean, I really appreciate the, your concerns about the humanitarian situation. A lot of people would do that. <clears throat> but what about the political aspect? Like, do you have any c concerns about the political aspect I think and the political what process? What we're seeing, uh, because of the lack of progress on finding a political, peaceful solution to the, uh, to the, Yemen, uh, to the Yemen crisis, that we have been working at tirelessly for too long now. Uh, we have been pushing the parties to get back to the table. The longer this takes, the more complex the situation on the ground becomes, the more complex the political situation on the ground, the more fragmentation that we see of armed groups and armed conflict in the country. And that only piles on to the misery of the Yemeni people. I think this also should serve as, as if we needed more excuses uh, for the parties to return to the table, to find a political solution. There is no military solution. I mean, how, how many people need to die? How many, pe how many Yemenis need, need to suffer? How many hospitals and bridges and all sorts of civil infrastructure needs to be uh, destroyed? Uh, all the leaders involved, whether national or regional, need to get back to the table to find a political solution. Evelyn, and then we'll... Yes, also on Syria, uh, Mrs. Muller uh, this morning mentioned the difficulty in getting more patients to Damascus for emergency care and said 21 that already died who were waiting for such care. Um, I thought the SG staff had been negotiating this for quite a while to get people into proper hospitals. Well, we've, we've, Has we've it been, fallen our, apart? Or? Our, our humanitarian colleagues have been focused on that for quite some time in Syria. Um, but as, as we know, what is, often, uh, what is often promised on paper doesn't always materialize uh, on the ground. And it's very unfortunate, especially for people who need urgent medical care. Majid. Thank you, um, I would ask, uh, question about Iraq, but before that, can you try to get us a number about the civilian casualties in Afrin later mm -hmm. on? And uh, uh, my question about Iraq, there will be an international conference to rebuild mm -hmm. and reconstructing Iraq. Uh, will the Secretary General participate in that conference? Yes, I believe he will. We're waiting for an official announcement soon, but I believe he will, uh, he will do that. And that will be part of another larger trip, but we expect him to be there. Hey, Matthew, let's go, and then we'll go. And then, did you have a question? And then Linda, and then Brendan. You, get, you don't get to ask a question, you get to answer them. Go ahead. Sure, I wanted to ask you about in Kenya, um, Raul Odinga has done his you know, alternative inauguration, but the government shut down TV and radio stations during it, and there's a well-known blogger there, Cyprian Niakundi, uh, whose relatives have been uh, illegally arrested and, and asked to, do, to turn over where he is. Does the UN, including the country team, have any comment on these government actions? Sure, I think we're, we're obviously uh, taking a look at this situation as it's unfolding and keeping an eye on it very closely. Uh, what is important and our urging is that all Kenyan parties, political actors, and their supporters maintain a lawful and peaceful social and political environment. We want to reiterate that it's important that Kenyans continue to uphold the Constitution and work together to strengthen governance advance inclusive development and uphold human rights and the rule of law. In recognition of the critical role of security agencies in preventing violence and maintaining law and order, the UN urges all law enforcement officials in Kenya to continue to observe the law and respond proportionally in dealing with protests. Uh, we do, of course, feel that uh, it is 
critical uh, for the media to be able to operate freely and to report freely on these uh, on these uh, situations. Just as a UN, I guess as a UN connection, the, the blogger that I named is quite well known. There is not only I guess one of the reasons I'm asking whether the country team did it is that he's someone who's actually blocked by the resident representative of the Secretary General, despite being a well-known commentator in Kenya. So the UN maybe doesn't think his relative should be arrested and detained and asked to, but is, I, I think do they, uh, they believe I, in I'm not media, aware of, I'm not they? aware of the particular case. You're welcome to contact the, our colleagues in in Nairobi, uh, but I'm not aware of the particular and case. Can you get an answer on the, the, this ICC guideline of OLA? You said you're sure that the guidelines were followed, but it's easy I, I, enough for you to find out. Can I, you? Will I will leave it at that for the time well, being. Why not? Uh, Linda, and then, oh, and then Sylviane. Thank you, Steph. Um, turning to Ukraine, is there any sense um, by the UN that there is progress being made in terms of a political settlement? I think the short answer would be we have not seen the progress that we'd like to see. There, there are a number. There's a process, uh, uh, a process that exists that we support, uh, but the humanitarian situation is not is one that is not improving is because of lack of political process. Uh, uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, there is uh, violence uh, erupted yesterday in uh, Beirut, in Lebanon, in different part of Lebanon, mm -hmm. due to supporter of the head of parliament. Uh, do you have any comment on that? No, we're, we're aware of the situation. We're obviously calling for, for calm and for restraint. Evelyn, yes, um, your microphone, please. Yeah, in Yemen, is there any indication that the coalition led by Saudi Arabia is interested in talks, or because of their superior Look, I, I, military power, just bang away? I will leave the, the analysis uh, to you. Uh, what we need is political will on all sides to restart the talks.